Hi, Elijah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, great to see you. I hope, uh, hope you're doing well over there in Barrie. Yes, it is a beautiful hot day. It's like 22 degrees. It's lovely. Insane. I know we all needed it coming out of this whack winter we had. And is it the same in Ottawa? I know Ottawa sometimes is a lot colder for a lot longer. It is. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's beautiful here. I'm trying to get outside today as much as I can, but uh, <laughs> I'm currently locked in a basement. So yes, <laughs> making the most of it. I'm just wondering, is there still ice on the sidewalks in Ottawa? There isn't. Thank oh, goodness. Good. Usually it's like, yeah, we get like one month of nice weather here, but, uh, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate or fortunately come early this year. Yeah. I remember I lived there for four years and there were some years where I could swear that it was the end of April and there was still like two centimeters of ice on the sidewalks because it was just Iceland. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's brutal. Some years are absolutely terrible, but this year has been good. We actually, I went out golfing yesterday, which was incredible. Very so nice. like, yeah, the, yeah, the course was not nice, but it was, it was still just great to be outside. And how did you do? Oh, miserable. Like just incredibly bad, like <laughs> first, first round out. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully it's a good like baseline of like, Hey, I can't do worse. Yeah. I can't even hit a golf ball. So there you go. <laughs> I've tried. Honestly, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm a little bit better than that just a little bit though oh that's good yeah yeah i think there's something wrong with me literally cannot hit a golf ball <laughs> <laughs> it's not the worst not the worst hey sound. it's not a skill that i need every day so that's fine there you go so you are in your basement looks like you've got a, a studio there how i has, do how has this past year been, been for you has it been different like given what you do has it been okay during all these lockdowns and not everything I mean, the biggest way that we've been affected is all the, the touring and, and the traveling is kind of screamed to a halt. But uh, I've been saying 2020 and 2021 has been sort of like the best 13, 14 months of my life. Um, I, I've been so fortunate to be here and have an amazing studio set up and to be able to to work on music, which is ultimately the reason um, that I do this. I love seeing people and I love touring and all that, uh, but it's sort of forced me indoors and forced me to to kind of perfect the things that that I most love and that being my own project and working with other amazing artists obviously it's all bit it's all virtual now which I miss seeing people but I've been so fortunate to have this time just sort of allocated to being like hey create music be at home do all that and that's like really my passion so did you have plans for these past 18 months were you supposed to have been on the road Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we had a full summer, uh, myself and Jamie had a full summer last year, um, doing a bunch of festivals and, uh, we we're supposed to go to, I think we we're, we we're in Europe for August and September doing a bunch of festivals there. And then all that all kind of screamed to a halt. And, uh, it was kind of serendipity though. I think we both needed a change of pace and both needed to, to move somewhere else creatively. And, and yeah, I just, I, I think this, the whole lockdown for me, as as terrible as, as it's been for some people, it's just kind of been serendipity. It's it's pushed me to do some things that I wouldn't have done without it, and with it, have made me so much happier. So you've been working in your basements and uh, on some solo stuff. Tell me about that. I have, yeah. I've been. Um, I mean, coming out of the Elijah Wood Jamie Fine projects over the kind of the past eighteen months has been um, sort of a like a long-winded transition for Jame and I. Um, initially, we started off as two separate artists. We came together, created some really amazing, amazing music, and um, that hasn't stopped by any means. But it, it's it's like a, the next step for both of us to do to do solo things. I think we we kind of found that we we're coming to some sort of creative differences and moving to to the singing piece was the next step for me um i've, I've always sort of sang background vocals and never thought about myself as a, as a forward singer a singer of pitch demos to people and sang on um songs that i give away to other artists and everything but it was never one of those things that i was like hey this is this is me this is the front man sort of stuff and given the time that i had at home i was writing a lot of music that was really really personal to me so i, I started to really connect with it and i would say the november before quarantine i was like hey i'm going to take this thing singing thing seriously and then it just hit and i was like okay this is this is what i'm doing and this is what i'm going to spend the next year doing and i worked and wrote and started writing these songs that felt really personal and really connected and i couldn't hear anybody else's voice on them so i sort of took that as a good indication to be like hey this is the right the right thing for me to do and um yeah then i mean we put out the first song lights in january and the response has been unbelievable i, I didn't know it would go this well I, I thought it would kind of be one of those things like all right put out a song put out the next one like things are going to progress and um and i think we're we're top like 2023 20, 25 um in canada right now which is insane that blows my mind like my first time singing on a song and 
um, Canadians as a whole have been so supportive of, of me and my music. And it's so validating to have such a personal song be so well received. I've always wondered what it's like for a songwriter who gives away songs or sells them, I guess. Like that's your business. Mm -hmm. That's what keeps food on your table. Um, what is that point where you were saying that you couldn't hear anyone else's voice? And is this really the first time with the song Lights and, and what you've been writing that you've just not been able to give it away? Or has there ever been another song where you're kind of like, mm, maybe I don't want to let this one go? There's definitely been a few. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, I think Lights was the first one that I absolutely knew I couldn't give away because it's, it's straight up a story about something I went through. Um, and I think somebody else probably could have sang it. It's not the most difficult song to sing, but it's it's really, I think what people are connecting with is it's very real and it's very um, like emotionally driven for me. So um, there have been songs in the past for that. Um, there's another song that Jamie and I did a, a little while ago. Um, without giving away the title it was a really personal story and i always said like it actually it, it never came out and i always said like oh i always really want to cut this song and it's more about um it's more about could i hear somebody delivering this story better um and that's that that's always the way i think about pitching songs is could somebody do this story better than i can and sometimes the messaging is so is so simple it could be like a story about a breakup or a love or whatever it is that everybody can sort of relate to and sometimes there's things that are so specific and so intrinsic into the song they're like okay i wrote a song for let's call it and I haven't done this, but I wrote a song for Justin Bieber that I was talking about Haley in a specific way. And you sort of cater it to an artist to make sure that it is personal and they can relate to it and that people relate to that song because it's so personal to their life. But some of the songs that are most of the songs that I'm writing these days are so personal to me that I can't imagine giving them away. Um, but it's a different sort of part of your brain, I think, writing from somebody else's perspective versus your own. And I get I get kind of the best of both worlds now because I'm working with some incredibly talented writers and I sort of get to put myself in their shoes and check out of my own reality for a bit. And then I also get to like steal their ideas and kind of go back to my own project and be like, hey, this is, this is a way I want to say what I want to say. Yeah. When you give a song to someone else or when you work with someone else to write a song, like for instance, if you did write a song for Justin Bieber, maybe one day that will happen. Um, Hopefully does, soon. <laughs> does, it, does the singer take that song and then work with another team and kind of change up lyrics or how does that usually happen when you write for other people? Uh, it, it really depends on the song. Um, I've had instances where the song is cut verba verbatim to, to sort of um, the initial demo that we did. Um, and there's sometimes where all the melodies are the same, but they'll go in with a different writer or they'll go in on, on themselves and change it. But it really comes down to the artist. And I think that's sort of my job as a producer is to sort of know when to help and when to back off. Um, I'm working with a few people right now, Jesse being one of them, who has storylines. She has her, her her narrative. She's got her stuff going on. And I, I, I edit. Um, so I pick and choose sort of like, hey, here's a better way to say that. Or I think we can beat that lyric or let's may, maybe make a melodic change here. But in in reality, she's got 75% of the song sort of um, like lyrically done or, or melodically done. And I'm, I'm in there facilitating um, that song becoming a product, becoming, becoming an actual song rather than just a voice memo on their, on their iPhone. So it sort of depends on the, on the artist. Um, but it's an, it's an interesting process. It's like meeting somebody for the first time or meeting somebody and trying to get to know them. Um, and it's all about their comfort zones and what they need help with and where they like where I can fill in uh, those sort of gaps. Um, but it, it, it's very, it's very uh, song specific or even artist specific as well. As someone who has sung in choir since I was a little kid, I found it interesting for you to say that you, like you in the music industry, never thought of yourself as a singer. So I'm wondering what was your in with music? When did it start in your life and how, how was it? How did it manifest if, if not singing? Um, initially it was, um, my first, my first instrument was the guitar. Um, when I was really young, um, my dad always like, he grew up playing the guitar and he taught me at a super young age. I sort of just like watched him play and then I wanted to pick it up. And, um, I wouldn't even say he was a guitar teacher. He was more of like a facilitator. Cause I'm one of those people who like, when I get into something, I just have to, I have to figure it out. Um, so I got super into playing the guitar when I was really young and then I gave it up through sort of high school. Um, and then I always meddled with the piano. My mom tried to put me in piano lessons when I was younger and I was like, no, this is cool. I want to play sports and do all that. And 
I was just an idiot. So like, I should just kept going with that because I had to reteach myself piano at the age of like 21. Um, but it was, it was initially that. And then I got into DJing when I was like 14, 15, cause that was like the cool thing to do at the time. And, um, that was sort of my, I would say that was like my deep dive into, okay, here's, here's a song and here's how I can put two songs together. And then I got really sick of that really fast. Cause it was like, I'm just mixing other people's music. It's not that creative. There's not much I can do with it. It wasn't like my big passion, but then that led me into the production thing. It was like, oh, okay. I can make that sound myself. I can record this guitar and then I can record ideas on top of it. And then it, it started with this whole idea of like looping. Um, so basically having just a snap and then layering a bunch of things on top of that, whether it was my own voice, whether it was an instrument, whether it was like the sound of a can, whatever it is, like, anything that I could put my hands on, I wanted to put into a song and try to make it work. And then that's sort of like, that's kind of one thing spun out of control in terms of like production for me. It's all I did all the time. Um, it's all I could think about just how, how to make new sound and how to make um, songs that didn't sound like anything else or recreating songs that I, that I'd sort of um, heard on the radio or heard. Um, and at the time it was, it was largely like in clubs and like big EDM festivals and stuff like that. Um, and that was sort of like my initial, my initial end to all of that was was how do I how do I make sound and and make it sound cool over an eight bar loop and then that evolved into producing fully fledged songs somehow. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. I dabbled <laughs> I dabbled with the DJ thing once a while. Okay. Ago. Yeah. Someone someone was like, oh, let me teach you how to be a real DJ, not a radio DJ. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then, so I actually worked with the turntables and I was pretty decent at it actually, but I never bought my own set so. It's, it's fun. Yeah. It's it's definitely fun. It's like it's a cool um it's a cool sort of like way into songs, I think. Like it's it's a unique approach and something that a lot of kids have access to nowadays, which is awesome to see because sort of anybody can pick up a piece of DJ software and it's cheap. You don't just spend thousands of dollars on turntables anymore. You can just get like a DJ app on your iPhone to mix two songs together and you're like, Hey, I'm creative, which yeah. is cool. Yeah. And you can also have an entire studio in your basement and you don't have to go anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. I'm very, very fortunate. I'm in Germany and I'll go over Zoom and it's all good. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's the best. I mean, I miss human contact for sure. Cause there's something special about being in the same room, writing music and, and connecting with somebody just even on like a friendship level. I, I really miss that. But uh, yeah, very fortunate that we have this in this, in this time. Cause it, it could have been a lot worse if this was like 2001 and we were all in dial up internet. Yes. Dial up internet. You are old enough to remember that. <laughs> I am. I had dial up. I had dial up. So we're, I grew up in, in a super small town, um, way smaller than Barrie. Uh, what are you guys like 50,000 or something? 75,000 maybe. Yeah. Okay. So I grew up in Perth, Ontario, which is mm -hmm. like 6,000 people. Um, and we had dial up internet until I was in maybe grade 10, which makes me sound really old. And I'm not that old, but it, it was just like this area of the world that we couldn't get couldn't get internet so i had dial up forever and i just remember having to download school projects and stuff and i have to like go to the library and like download them and then use my windows 2000s bootleg computer and then finally i got a laptop and yeah change changed my life and have you featured that iconic sound in any music i haven't that's a good idea the other one the one i did is i did um i did use the windows 2000 sound in a in a demo i sent out and then you can't get that cleared because it's owned yeah. by microsoft so <laughs> i unfortunately couldn't couldn't keep it in there but uh the dial-up will be good that yeah i don't think really anyone good. i don't think that's the audio logo for anything so you're good no. yeah. i think i think you're right and i think it's random generated noises too so yeah i think i, I think you're on to something maybe i'll write a song we'll call it early 2000s or something awesome <laughs> so uh just before we go tell me other than music what's bringing you joy in your life right now Honestly, great question. I've been on this like existential journey lately, trying to figure out things that stimulate me outside of this world. Cause I think we're all so, I mean, it's not just me, but we're also cooped up inside and like inside our own heads. Um, and it's so tough to just check out. Um, so I, I, I literally, I just started acupuncture this morning. I don't know if you've ever done that. Like I've never been like huge into that. It was my first time. I had a friend who did it. She like swore by it. And I went and checked it out. It was unbelievable. Like, I feel so like de-stressed today. Like, I just feel incredible. Um, I've been trying to golf. I mean, like now that it's like everybody's a golfer as of 2020, because <laughs> there's nothing else to do in this whack stay at home thing. Yeah. So um, I've been doing that. Um, and I've been trying to read as much as possible. But I think um, I think my goal of like 2020, 2021 has been to try to do something analog outside of these little screens that we live in. My brother said something really funny the other day. Um, he was like, how weird is it that you wake up 
and you check a small screen and then you move to your medium screen for the rest of the day. And then you go to sleep watching a big screen and it's every day you're doing the exact same thing. Your screens just get bigger as the day progresses because yeah. we spend our entire day just tuning into these little, little boxes. And if you can break that cycle at all, I think that's sort of the key for me at least. Yeah. What are you reading? Uh, I am reading Normal People right now. Incredible book. Would highly recommend it. I actually wrote a song about it, which I'm super stoked about. Um, and yeah, I just like, it's tough because everything, everything's just a vehicle for a song. Like everything's just sort of like, <laughs> I do this because I want to write songs, which is kind of my my addiction, unfortunately. Um, but it, it's, it's a good one to have. Um, but I'm reading uh, Normal People right now. Um, what else did I read? Um, I read uh, cliche, but I read how to win friends and influence people. It's a good one. Um, it's an obvious. Um, what else did I read? Those are the two that I've sort of been on, on, on the last little bit. I've been stuck. Normal People is incredible though. That's the one they made a, a TV show out about, right? It's yeah. On- I think it's on CBC gem. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. It's really, really, I haven't seen the TV show yet, but I've been, uh, I've been waiting. I got like 10 pages left. So hopefully I'll finish that. Uh, I think I'll finish that outside. Today. I'm going to put good that little. on my list. I've been stuck on, the Louise Penny Gamache novels. They're mystery novels set in Quebec. And they're just okay. they're just so very good. And the main character, you just fall in love with him. He's just such a nice guy. Okay. <laughs> it's not like you expect to hear in like a mystery novels with murders, but yeah. That's okay. Cool. Reading on my oh, Kobo. Um yeah. So and and we did mention uh that we had to talk about Shwarma in Ottawa. We did. Yeah. It's the staple. It's the only real thing that matters about Ottawa. <laughs> I love, you know, I love Ottawa because I, I don't really like big cities, but Ottawa is just city enough for me and just small town enough for me. And so I'm a big fan of that city, but I know a lot of people think it's not exciting enough, but the shawarma is amazing. It is. Yeah. No, I'm, I, I mean, I'm very fortunate to live where I live. Um, I live in like the suburbs just outside of Ottawa and I'm lucky enough to have a space that I can make noise and do all that. Um, and it's super safe and everybody's very kind. So I can't, I can't say anything too bad about it. I just, I honestly just wish it wasn't so stark. It's like, everything is like void of any sort of creativity and like visually in visually eight months of the year, Ottawa is the grayest place other than maybe Winnipeg. I don't know. I think it might be, it might be close. It's pretty gray, but then next month you're going to have the Tulip Festival. It'll be yeah, a little yeah, brighter. There you go. Look yeah. at this optimism. I love it. This is what yeah. I need today. Okay, so when you do go into Ottawa proper, you need to go in the south end off Alta Vista to Ozzy's Food Mart and get shawarma there. Just, Ozzy's Food Mart. Just south of, so you go down Bank and you pass, um, that big one that goes across, I can't remember now. And then just, I think it's on, I think it's Alta Vista, but I don't know. Anyway, Aussie's Food Mart has the best shawarma. It's so okay, good. I think I I think I can one up you for all the people in Barry. There's a place on Carling. It's I believe it's called Shora Palace, but it's on Carling. It's like Carling and Bayshore yeah. in the West End. So it's like it's near the shopping mall there. Yeah. And it's just lights out. Like there's, I've never had a better shawarma in my life. You'll, you'll die because it's like coated. I didn't know this, but the way they make shawarma is they layer chicken breast. If you get the chicken ones, I, mean, I think beef's the same, but you, they layer chicken breast, a layer of fat, chicken breast, layer of fat on those big things. And it's just, okay. that's how it's so succulent. That's how it's so oh. good. Okay. So I come every year uh, to a family cottage in Arn Pryor and I have literally okay. made the two hour round trip to go to Aussie's. So I will go to the one that you've just recommended as well. And I'll let you know which one's better. Yeah. Don't AB them back to back because you might have a heart attack, yes. but you, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely incredible. It's definitely my favorite one in Ottawa. And I've been to, been to a handful of them. Awesome. Well, it's so great to talk to you. And I really hope that Cody doesn't cut out this part about, about the shrimp. <laughs> I hope not either. It's the only, it's the only part of the interview that matters. This is going to be titled shawarmas. Shawarma. Shawarma's in Shawarma Ottawa. Shawarma with Elijah Wood. Okay. Uh, yeah. They should, they should pay me for some promo. Um, you know, I gotta, I, I gotta thank you um, so much for, for playing all of our stuff um, and lights being the, the latest of that. Um, I, yeah, I had no idea that this was going to be um, the success that it is. Cause I, I straight up didn't even know it was going to go to radio. And then all of a sudden can you radio started adding it? And it was just like, it was a really, a really, really special moment for me.